If you guys have been wondering where all the graphics cards are, why can't I buy a 3080? Why are prices so high? It's because I got them all. Be Quiet introduces a new way to keep your PC build cool, silent, and looking fresh. Meet the Silent Base 802, available in black or white, windowed, or silence focused. Each case comes with interchangeable top and side panels, a fully kitted out front I.O. selection, three Pure Wings fans, and a completely modular interior layout that lets you even run the system inverted. With support for up to 420mm radiators or a full complement of hard drives, make the Silent Base the start of your next PC build. Check out the link below or head to BeQuiet.com to learn more. If you guys are new here to the channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoy this content and get a little bit of education about what exactly is going on in the graphics card and PC hardware space in general, why prices are so high, why they might unfortunately stay high. And if you find this information useful at all, make sure to get subscribed at that link down below. Consider hitting that like button and also maybe following me on Twitter. So a few weeks ago, I published a video about how you can buy a graphics card right now and not get ripped off. Now, these aren't foolproof methods for picking up something like this, but they did help a good amount of people. But I got a lot of feedback saying, why are prices so high? Apparently, a lot of people are understanding that there is a shortage in the market right now, but the exact specifics of why there is a shortage, why people can't find these cards on store shelves, why prices are so high, where this is all coming from, seems to be either lost on a lot of people or maybe that message isn't effectively relayed to the general public. So that's what this video is going to address. And in the course of researching this piece, I also came to a rather unfortunate conclusion. Maybe prices are just gonna stay here. In order to understand why these are out of stock, it's actually important to take a step back and understand what this is. This is a silicon wafer. Now, no, it's not a bunch of RTX 3080s that I'm just hoarding for myself. That would be pretty cool actually, but that's not the case. This is actually an old wafer, I believe from Texas Instruments. So maybe this is a whole bunch of little calculator parts or something like that. But I have a couple of these in the office and they serve as really nice set decorations because they look really cool and they shine in all kinds of different ways. Uh, when you put them under different light. But we're not really worried about their decorative properties right now. We're actually more worried about how long it takes to produce them and how this turns into this. We're gonna keep this pretty high level here. Silicon wafer production is extremely complicated. And although I understand a little bit about it, I don't have the depth of understanding that would allow me to convey that information to you guys and I don't wanna mislead anybody. So. For the purposes of this video, we're just gonna say that this is the finished product. And we're gonna talk a little bit about how we get here and then what happens after this comes off of the line. There are a few major manufacturers of silicon wafers. Now, silicon wafers are what CPUs and GPUs and other computing devices are derived from. It's what makes a semiconductor. If you take a closer look at this wafer, you can see that it actually is made up of a repeating pattern. And that's because there are many different dies onto one wafer. So once a wafer is produced, it is then cut into pieces that represent individual GPUs or CPUs, and then that is packaged onto a substrate and shipped off to a manufacturer to be made into the product that you buy on store shelves. The total timeline between starting this process and ending up with a chip that can be sold takes between 11 and 13 weeks for modern process nodes. You've probably heard the term seven nanometer or eight nanometer, referring to the processes that are used to make NVIDIA and or AMD GPUs recently. This is a seven nanometer GPU. NVIDIA's newest stuff is eight nanometer. Now, the production of those wafers takes between 11 and 13 weeks in general. This is pretty broad, like I said, but just use this as a point of reference. And if you want links to any of the sources that I pulled this information from, I'm gonna leave them all down below. So feel free to go check them out yourself. But when we're talking about larger process nodes, that timeline shrinks considerably. But for modern processes, for modern manufacturing, for modern wafers and dyes, 
you're looking at about between 11 and 13 weeks to even make the silicon. Now that is not the end of the story for TSMC or Samsung or Intel or whichever fab is pumping these out. You also have to worry about yield. Now, not every single one of these will be functional. TSMC on average runs at about 80% effectiveness when it comes to yields. That means about 80% of the individual, let's call them CPUs on a single wafer will be usable. However, that number goes way down when you're talking about larger things like big GPUs used in the 6900 XT or an RTX 3080 or 3090. You can't fit as many of them on a single wafer as you can with smaller dies. So if one of those goes bad or two of those go bad on a wafer, it drags the effectiveness and the yield way down versus what you would have on a wafer with many smaller little GPUs on it. This in a nutshell is one of the reasons why an RTX 3080 is so much more expensive than an RTX 3060. Not only is it more powerful, but it's more costly to produce and has lower yields. Fabs like TSMC generally are not running at 100% capacity. That is not what they aim to do. In fact, they usually reserve some of their fab space for need. So if AMD is launching a new GPU and CPU simultaneously and needs all of the seven nanometer space that TSMC has, they can then utilize some of that additional headroom and expand from 80% capacity up to 90% capacity, pump out more of the silicon that is needed for these products and meet demand. But if you guys were aware, there's been a little problem in the world over the past year and fabs were shut down for a few months. Now, they are now back and running at full capacity, but there's a huge backlog that needs to be caught up on. So TSMC and likely Samsung are now running at 100% capacity in order to make up for all the time that was lost due to shutdown. Well, what does that mean when AMD and Nvidia are coming to them and saying, Hey guys, we are running short on product. We need more. Let's up, let's use up that capacity that you guys have on reserve. They don't have it. They do not have the physical space on their fab floor in order to actually increase their production to meet the demand that is also increasing. Now we have a lot of people at home recently, a lot of people needing to upgrade their setups, a lot of people just wanting to get into PC gaming. Demand is higher than it has ever been before for silicon of all types. So you have all these fabs running at 100% to try to make up the backlog. And at the same time, you have demand higher than it's ever been before. And there's a huge gap between what can be produced and what needs to be produced. There is more to this. As auto manufacturers continue to expand the AI functionality of their vehicles, they need more and more of this stuff to put into their cars. So it used to be that a car was just a mechanical piece of machinery that sat in your driveway and only responded when you turned a physical key in the ignition. Now I can open an app on my phone and hit a button and start my car from 20 miles away because the brain of the car is smart enough to understand the signals that are coming over the internet. How did that happen? More of this. We have more semiconductors and more silicon used in every automobile today than we ever have before, and that is putting additional strain on the semiconductor industry. This is an expanding problem. Things are becoming smart that were never smart before. We have smart light switches, smart appliances, smart vacuums and bulbs. Every TV produced now is a smart TV. I could preheat my oven on my way home from work. It doesn't really matter what it is now. Companies are looking to put smart functionality into it in order to make it more convenient, better for consumers. But that means that there's silicon in basically everything now that's being manufactured and the capacity has not been ramped up in order to be able to meet that kind of demand. The auto industry is actually scrambling right now to get their hands on any silicon that they can in order to make sure that their production lines and their delivery of vehicles remains uninterrupted. Ford and GM have a whole ton of vehicles right now that are produced and finished with the exception of the ECU or the computer inside of the car, which 
they don't have. They can't get. All these cars and trucks are sitting finished in their lots in Detroit without any electronics in them because they cannot get the supply. How do we fix this? Well, there are three major semiconductor manufacturers in the world right now. It's Samsung, then TSMC, then Intel. Now, Intel generally focuses mostly on its own products. To my knowledge and through my research, I couldn't find any evidence that Intel leases out their fab space to others. It might, but for the purposes of this video, let's focus on Samsung and TSMC, which are the two biggest anyway. Both of those companies have a huge amount of fab space dedicated to the production of silicon for other companies. TSMC has just dedicated an additional $100 billion with a B to increasing their fab space over the next few years. That's several new factories, including one in the United States that are hopefully going to allow silicon production to catch up to demand. Now, keep in mind over the next few years, things are not gonna get dumber. You're still gonna have a whole bunch of products coming out and increasing volumes that are going to need the silicon but $100 billion for many additional fabs seems like a good start. But these fabs are not gonna come online for two, three, or four years. What's gonna happen in the meantime? Well, in the meantime, they've increased their price for wafers by about 25%. A 25% increase in every single one of these that rolls off the line and is needed for every single one of these that you see on store shelves. What are the odds you think that companies are going to ignore this price increase and not pass that along to consumers? In addition to that, this is not just made up of silicon. It's made up of a whole bunch of metal, plastic, connectors, other components, LEDs that need to go into the production of these cards. And there has been a worldwide material shortage for the past almost year now, again stemming from the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. In some cases, factories that make steel haven't even ramped up production yet. And we're talking about a full year of just being at limited or no capacity. So you have TSMC increasing the cost of their wafers by 25-ish percent. You have a worldwide shortage of metal and other materials needed to build these cards. And the end result is that vendors like MSI and Asus have recently increased the price of all of their products across the board, graphics cards and motherboards and sometimes other accessories in accordance with that increase in price of the source materials. So even if you can manage to find a card on store shelves right now, it's going to be marked up by about 25 to 30% over its initial MSRP, simply because a lot of these vendors don't have the materials or the silicon to continue production in the volume that they need to. At least that's what they tell you. Now, when I reached out to a couple of industry sources who will remain anonymous and talk to them about this issue, the general consensus and the company line that was told and is being towed by a lot of people is, what is the reason for this shortage and price increase? COVID. I also got a couple tariffs. That might be true. There might be some level of truth to that, but it does come back to companies understanding that they have the ability to charge this amount of money and have the card sell out regardless of what is being charged and understanding that these prices now are the new benchmark. This is now what is sustainable. If I have this card and this retail as an example for $1,200, but every single vendor out there is selling these for 17 or $1,800 and they're selling out instantly on store shelves. What do you think the next round of MSRP is going to be for the next generation of card? Do you think that companies are going to come out and start selling the cards for lower amounts of money than they know will sell out everywhere? The answer is no. As pessimistic as that sounds, one of the reasons why we cannot necessarily count on prices coming back down to normal is because of crypto. Right now, if you're at home and you have a graphics card and you want to mine something to get a little bit of return on your money, which I certainly wouldn't blame you for, what you're going to be mining on that graphics card and what the vast majority of crypto mining farms 
are doing right now that are using graphics cards is to mine Ethereum. The reason that you're mining Ethereum is that transaction fees on the Ethereum network right now are still sky high. More crypto assets than ever are using the Ethereum blockchain and relying on that blockchain for those transaction verifications, including a lot of NFTs, which for some reason are a thing. The higher the transaction fees, the higher your profit when you're mining, and this just keeps going up. As the transaction fees increase due to increased activity on the Ethereum network, more and more people become interested in mining, more and more people are buying up these cards like crazy, and the shortages continue for the normal consumer. There is a glimmer of hope. Bitmain, which is a manufacturer of crypto ASICs, which are dedicated machines that only mine a certain crypto, are developing a new ant miner for specifically Ethereum mining. And this might take some of the load off of the GPU market when it comes to those looking to mine Ethereum. However, as long as Ethereum mining remains profitable, you will still see graphics cards being used for that purpose. So let's recap. You have fabs that have stopped production for a few months of silicon wafers, and you have a huge backlog of that work that is still being processed. The lead time on these is 11 to 13 weeks per wafer and you have a large volume of them being produced at once, but still cannot catch up to the demand. You have graphics cards now being used for Ethereum mining, and that isn't going away anytime soon. You have the material costs of these coolers that are increased because there is no supply of that stuff either. You have fabs increasing their costs by 25% for each wafer, and there are still things floating around like tariffs. Put that all together and that is the perfect storm for not only high prices, but increased demand and no supply. As a result, you have the highest prices in history for PC components that use any kind of silicon. And I don't know if it's going to stop anytime soon. With companies realizing that they can sell these parts for that amount of money, I don't know if we're going to see prices come back down to the pre-pandemic levels. I have my fingers crossed. I hope that that happens. I hope that we see prices come back and supply come back and things kind of balance out as maybe crypto takes a little bit of a dip or crypto ASICs kind of take over that space and fab production returns to its normal levels. But at this point, we're probably looking at 2022 and beyond before all of those things actually happen. And if you're somebody who builds PCs or even just built one for gaming recently and wants anything like a 1660 Ti, it might be quite a while before you're able to get one at any reasonable price. I am sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but hopefully this explainer kind of tells you why there is a supply shortage and what this is stemming from and how long it might last. And if it did, again, get subscribed to the channel and hopefully our next video is going to be a little bit less of a bummer. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, and I will see you next time.